What's up guys, what's going on? My name is Marcus Jose from The Bull Co. Welcome to our channel today and welcome to our next video. So back in 2013 when my wife and I first moved in together, I didn't have any dogs. And over the course of like a month, I was like, what am I missing from my life? And I told my wife, I, I think I want a dog. So she said, okay, we'll go look for one. If I was gonna buy a dog, I was gonna, I was gonna buy a dog I've always wanted. And coming where I come from, which is Stockton, California, we've always seen those dogs that with the huge heads and just, I would call them, you know, traffic stoppers that people just are kind of just drawn to how big this dog is or how cool this dog's looking. And I wanted that dog. So after about two, three weeks of looking, I seen this dog and online and I, I contact the guy and we meet he told me yeah you could show this dog and this is a concept I've never even thought about before but when he said that it planted a seed I could show the dog so fast forward about two or three months there was a show happening it was probably September October at this point and we get there it is it is pouring rain it is coming down and the crazy thing was what I seen were grown men wiping down their dogs to make them as pretty as possible as clean as possible and i had thought to myself what is going on here so we sat there for about i don't know three or four hours watching these guys you know parade these dogs around the ring i was just fascinated by it and you can say i was hooked so i started showing my dog not knowing what i was doing every single time i went into the ring i lost i had no idea what i was doing so i absolutely needed a mentor i got in contact with a judge his name was john he he showed me how to how to handle my dog how to hold the leash when i'm showing the dog what things i need to need to show what things i don't need to show what where the strengths of my dogs were and where the weaknesses were we started my dog show career at eight months old and i would say from eight months to uh, almost two years old it took me that long to attain a championship title for my very first dog. I remember the last time we showed the dog to get the championship title, it was the show in Bakersfield. It was an amazing time because I needed just 10 points, which was like one win, and I could I would have my champion title. And um, it didn't happen the first show, it didn't happen the second show, but by, by the third show, I felt like we were calm enough, we, we understood enough our, about our competition to be able to to outshow them um, and attain that title. And we did, and it was an amazing feeling and moment for us because, you know, the, the journey to take your first dog to from nothing, to not knowing anything, to a championship title was unbelievable. At this point, two years in, I start to understand more about the dog. And what I understand is that I want a different look for my bullies. I want them to look more towards standard because I would say that my dog Bane is more of a classic look. So I buy a new dog. Um, this dog came from Texas and she absolutely had the look that I wanted. Unfortunately, she didn't have the structure that I needed to uh, succeed in the ring. So it could, had to be to where I had to produce the dogs that I'm gonna move forward with. So it took me two years after that to produce another dog that I can show inside the show ring. Aside from being a showgoer, uh, a participant, I'm actually a breeder as well. And breeding is a whole different side to, to these dogs because on one side, for the American bully, you have those of us who take part in the show ring. We like to see how closely our dogs fit the standard of the dogs and there's another side to where I would say that some people want to just try to make money off the dog. They want their dog to be extreme as possible because at the end of the day, these dogs have to be companions. That's something that I want to make sure that every one of my clients who purchases a dog for me gets. We've been breeding now for, I would say I dropped my first litter uh, four years in. Since four years in, last three years, we've done four litters. So we don't breed too often. Um, and the way that I think is that if I'm gonna breed, I'm breeding for a reason. I'm gonna take that reason and utilize that reason in my program to get a better dog. So with breeding, I wanna improve on structure. So to say if my breeding program has really good rear angulations, I wanna keep that, but not so good shoulder angulations, I wanna improve on that. 
But with breeding down a lineage, you can't lose one piece and add another. You have to try to get a good mixture of both. And with that, that's how I breed dogs. I want to improve without losing what I have already. And I think that's an approach that not a lot of breeders take. Being a breeder is not just about the wins. More often than not, it's about dealing with your losses, financial, uh, broken hearts. Uh, if you're in this, you're truly gonna experience loss. Uh, recently, we've lost a dog here that was like my best friend. He helped train every single dog that came onto the yard. He was a great advocate for himself. He, everybody loved him. He loved everybody. He, he would roll over on his back to let some, make somebody uh, scratch his belly. And uh, we lost him recently and kind of threw me into a whirlwind because it was a dog that I depended on. I think dealing with loss is a part of being a breeder, a dog owner, a trainer. It's absolutely about how you can deal with that. It, because if you can't deal with losing a dog or can't deal with losing the financial investment of a dog, you're, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a quick exit for you out of doing this. So we threw our first show last year and it was probably the most it was, it was probably one of the more rewarding things that we've done in this community because we were able to bring more value than, I would say, I would say more direct value. A lot of times I do videos, I do you know, consultations and I help people with their dogs, but it, wasn't, it's never, it hasn't been what that was. So we had about 500 people in a huge building, you know, uh, showing their dogs, showing people what their dogs were made of, as so to speak, competing in the ring, show ring, and it was a great turnout. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do it this year, but we'll be doing it next year. And the great thing about next year is that I'm going to have my community, which is you guys, help me pick the name for the show. And I hope if you help me pick the name, I hope you guys show up. The one thing I want to leave you guys with is that no matter where you're at with your dog, whether you want to breed your dog or whether you just want a great companion, I want to say that it's never too late to change what you're doing. So if you have a dog that you want to, them to act better, if they're five years old, it can change. You can change it. it. It may take some professional help, but it can be done. If you want to be a better breeder, if you want to improve the breed, it's impossible. There's people out there like myself who will help you. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the video today. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and make sure you leave a comment. I want to do some videos that you guys want to see to bring more value to your day. Things like how to walk on a leash, things like how to get your dog to stop chewing on your walls. I want to help. You guys have a good one. Take it easy.